This is the next video for the bonus series where we want to build a ground station for a geostationary satellite and contact a station in Antarctica. I will not repeat the content of the previous video, so it is highly recommended to watch it first if not already done. But first I have to thank you. I asked if I should continue with the series and you responded. The video got four times the amount of comments than my other videos and most were positive or even enthusiastic. So let's continue with a bonus series. Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Last time we got an overview of the needed components. Today we will build and test the first part, a 2.4 GHz transmitter with an output of 20 watts or 43 dBm. This is quite a lot if we compare it with the 100 mW maximal power of a LoRa transceiver. Of course you need a ham radio license to operate such a transceiver. Here in Switzerland you even need a special license. I have a ham license since 1977 and to get this special license was of course the first step. So from a legal point of view we are cleared. And the additional license was free of charge and delivered in only one day, during Corona lockdown. Maybe another Swiss world record? Some of my viewers wrote that 20 watts would not be needed. This would be great because this power amplifier is the most expensive part of the project. This one with 8 watts is 5 times less expensive. But as many other things from China, it's on its way, not yet arrived. As shown in the last video, I will use an Adalm Pluto SDR as a transmitter. So we first have to measure its output power. Then we can calculate the needed gain. Of course we can use a spectrum analyzer to measure its output power. Not a cheap solution. Later I will show you a cheaper one. Because the spectrum analyzer is very expensive, I do not want to destroy it. This is why we have to know its limitations. They are here. 30 dBm max, with an exclamation mark. We better stay way below that. Anyway, it's good practice to add an attenuator. I have here one for 20 dB and two watts. So no problem for the Pluto measurements. For sure, an issue for the 20 watts of the amplifier later on. To find the exact frequency for our purpose, we consult the band plan of the QO100. The uplink is on these frequencies. So we choose the middle for the test, 2, 4, 250. I use the SDR console software to create a tone, which is the name used by RF engineers for a single frequency. Here I can adjust the power. The maximum power is around minus 19 dBm. Of course, we have to add the 20 dB of the attenuator. The instrument can do that calculation automatically and now it shows around 1 dBm or 1 mW. Not a lot. Here is a good point to talk about dB and dBm. 0 dBm or 1 mW is the reference. So dBm is the measurement for power. Other than watts, it is logarithmic. 1 watt is 30 dBm and 20 watts is 43 dBm. dB is just a logarithmic multiplier. For power, 10 dB is a factor of 10. 30 dB is 1000. Why do we use dB and dBm? Because we are lazy. dB and dBm can be added and we can avoid a more complicated multiplication. So the calculation is easy. The Pluto delivers 1 dBm and our 20 watts are 43 dBm. So we need an amplification of 42 dB. Looking at the signal at full power on the Pluto, we see that we not only get the primary signal, we also get unwanted signals around the carrier. Not perfect. For the moment I do not know where it comes from. I already modified my Pluto for an external reference signal, but I did not get the GPSDO. 
So I use this ADF4351 board. So let's check it again when I got my GPSDO. If we reduce the power to minus 15 dBm, these frequencies are still there. So it seems that they come from the deep soul of the Pluto and not from any overdriven amplifier. I mentioned that I got a 20 watt amplifier as the last step before the antenna. According its datasheet, its gain is 37 dB. Its price is more than $200, which is a lot for AliExpress. So I assume you want to see what's inside? Actually, not a lot. First, we see that I have version 2 of the board. And as a driver, we find the Chinese YP2233W. It has 26 dB gain and can deliver already 34 dBm or 2.5 watts. The final stage is a YP02 27185. I did not find a data sheet, but these transistors are quite expensive and die fast if you do not pay attention. The rest is a boost converter which boosts the 12 volts input to 28 volts. We can calculate the input power needed to reach the 20 watts. 43 dBm minus 37 dB equals 6 dBm. So we search for an amplifier with a gain of at least 6 dBm minus 1 dBm equals 5 dB and an output power of 6 dBm. Here I have one with 20 dB gain and 10 dBm output power. It runs on 12 volts, which is anyway needed for the last stage. Cool. So let's connect this amplifier between the Pluto and the spectrum analyzer. And here is the place for some tips about working with radio frequencies. All RF components used in this project have 50 ohm connectors, which is the de facto standard in most applications. Never leave connectors open if not used, at least not if power is involved, because it fast can become expensive. Why? Power only can be transported to the next step if the cable or the next device has a 50 ohm input. Otherwise, parts or even the whole power is reflected. If you leave a connector open, it is very similar to if you would short circuit it. The power cannot leave the device and is completely reflected. RF power transistors already become hot during regular operation when they can deliver all power to the next stage. If they get it back, they easily overheat and die an expensive death. So, never leave connectors open. And if you have no other device to connect, you can connect a 50 ohm load. Then this load dissipates the heats and your amplifier is happy. Next, avoid turning male connectors inside female connectors because they lose the valuable plating over time. This is especially true for instruments where you often connect and disconnect cables. And third, if you want to do it right, you have to use such a tool to fasten the connectors. And really, we can drive the output to 15 dBm. At the required 6 dBm, the spurious elements stay 35 dB below, similar to without the amplifier. So we are good to go. Let's come back to my promise from the beginning of the video. I promised you a cheaper way to measure power. This is a power meter for around $30. Its range is from 1 MHz to 8 GHz. Incredible! But pay attention! It's only specified up to minus 5 dBm. And please adjust the frequency, otherwise your readings are not accurate. Also here I use a 20 dB attenuator and it shows 9.5 dBm, which is 3 dB away from the $3000 spectrum analyzer. Keep in mind, my setup is not exactly the same, so the results are not completely comparable. But frequent viewer know that I'm not known as a fetishist for exact measurements. I want to talk to the Antarctic and 1 dBm measuring difference will not prevent me from doing so. An additional goodie of the cheap power meter. You get a software with it for your PC. Of course, it is not really comparable with a spectrum analyzer because you do not see the spectrum and would not discover if your setup emits unwanted frequencies. 
but it's good to check power levels. Now comes the last step, adding the power amplifier. Now the 2 watt attenuator is no more sufficient. We need more. Fortunately, I have this one for 50 watts. I connect it in addition to the 20 dB attenuator. I do not want to risk my spectrum analyzer. It was already hard to convince the wife to get the permission to buy this one. After we connected the second attenuator and the amplifier, we can start it. On the minimum power of the Pluto, I get 10 dBm output or 100 mW. We can drive it up to around 41 dBm or 12 watts. Then it stops. The case gets quite warm after these short tests. I assume it has to be cooled if I want to talk for a longer time. So the setup works and delivers nearly the 43 dBm peak power. Now I can reveal another secret, at least for the non-HAM operators. I told you in the last video that I will use single sideband modulation. SSB was invented because of its power efficiency. I show you what this means. My transmitter is switched on, but we see no signal. Only one, if two, I start three, to talk, we see one, a signal. Two, three, but it is only one, high two, if three, I speak loud. One, so the two, average three, power is much smaller one, than two, the peak. Three, and we will hardly ever get the 20 watts out. So the power dissipation will not be as high as with a constant tone. And the chance that my amplifier survives is a little bit better. That's all for today. We successfully reached nearly 20 watts on 2.4 GHz, which will be way too much if I believe some of my viewers. But as a biker, I know displacement can only be replaced by more displacement. Next week we will go on with the receiving part, set up the dish antenna and hopefully hear the first signals from far in the space. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.